Wait, so like Baconator, Terminator, is that, are they like affiliated or? Look, the point is if anything's gonna be terminated today, it's not gonna be us. But better, we are on another American classic, the Wendy's Baconator. This is very special to a lot of people, and I and I understand that, and I respect that. And please understand that me shuffling their grave for them is meant with love. It's pretty straightforward. It's burger, and that's it. <laughs> It's burger patties, cheese, bacon, and ketchup and mayo. That's literally it. It's I think it's gonna be easy to beat, is what I'm trying to say. So without postponing this anymore, let's make this, shall we? Is that their slogan, quality is our recipe? Quality cannot be a recipe. A recipe is like a body of text that includes both directions and a list of ingredients. There's a breakfast baconator now? Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's a baconator, but then there's also a son of a baconator. What is the difference? Sorry, what's, what's the difference between the regular baconator and the son of a baconator? The patty size. So you get less meat? Two regular baconators and one son of a baconator. Thank you. We got, oh, it's wrong. One. The bag. It smells a little bit like a fart in there. So this is the regular baconator. It's like that. I hate that they are square patties. Wow. Wow. Are they square? I read somewhere that they do it so that you can see the meat, like the quality of the meat. I don't want to see that. Out of all the burgers I've had, this is like bottom of the barrel. First off, the bottom bun is soaked in grease. I mean like, that is how much grease is in the bottom bun. They say quality you can taste, but I think it's about time they taste my quality. So as usual, if we're gonna flex on a fast food burger, we need to make our own buns. This is a variation of my Hokkaido milk bread recipe. So start by combining two tablespoons or 20 grams of bread flour, two tablespoons or 27 grams of water, and four tablespoons or 60 grams of whole milk into a small saucepan. Mix that together thoroughly, heat over medium heat, and continue stirring constantly until this turns ultra thicky and sticky like so. Now just remove Mr. Thickums from the heat in a separate bowl and let it sit till room temperature. Separately, you're gonna dissolve one tablespoon or nine grams of active dry yeast into half a cup or 120 grams of lukewarm whole milk. And when I say lukewarm, I mean 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius. Then just let that sit at room temp for 10 minutes. Once your thickened mixture is cool and your yeast has bloomed, in the bowl of a stand mix, you're gonna combine two and a half cups or 320 grams of bread flour, one and a quarter tablespoon or 17 grams of granulated sugar, and one teaspoon or seven grams of fine sea salt. Give that some visky business. Uh, Trying out some new accents, as you can see. Pop it in your stand mixer with the dough hook attachment and set its speed to medium low. While that's mixing, add one whole egg plus one egg yolk and your yeasty milk. Continue to mix until it forms a nice dough. And look, if it's a little too dry, just add a tablespoon or so more of whole milk. Then just let that mix for about four minutes or until you get a nice smooth elastic dough. Then add three tablespoons or 42 grams of softened unsalted butter. Make sure to add it one tablespoon at a time to give it time to, you know, incorporate. Once all the butter's incorporated, let that brother mix for another minute or two until smooth. Then just pop it out of your stand mixer bowl like a newborn baby, roll it into a tot ball and place it in a lightly greased bowl. Then just cover it with plastic wrap or a moist towel and let it rise at room temp for one to two hours or until double. Then deceptively caress it and beat it down. You don't have to use a pumpkin, it could just be your hand. Then simply divide it evenly into six pieces. Now, if you're a true intellectual, you'll weigh each piece at around 95 to 105 grams each. Take each piece and form it into a ball by pulling in all the sides to the center, flipping it over so the seam side faces down and roll it in circles with your hand, staying in contact with the bench till you get a tight widow ball. Transfer that to a baking sheet, line with parchment paper and repeat this with the rest. Now make sure to space them apart evenly, otherwise you're gonna be very sad when these rise. Then just cover that with another rimmed baking sheet and let them proof at room temperature for 30 minutes. <laughs> your poopy balls time <laughs> Now once your balls have rested, give them a light brushing of egg wash consisting of one egg plus a small splash of water whisk together. Be sure to coat the total surface area. Don't miss a single spot. Then just pop those bad boys in the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius ideally with a convection setting if you have one, for 15 to 18 minutes or until the most beautiful golden brown balls greet you out of the oven. Brush each of them lightly with melted butter and let them cool on a wire rack. I mean, look, these buns alone are already winning. Now let's talk about beef. They say fresh never frozen, but what about fresh ground? Hmm, what about that? What about fresh ground, big boy? The grind never stops. 
all right? Of course, you don't have to do this, but if you do, I'll give you a kiss. And also, you'll want one pound or 450 grams of short rib, half a pound or 225 grams of sirloin, and one pound or 450 grams of chuck roast. Then just cut those into pieces that'll fit into your grinder's hole, toss them together, and well, um, you know, run them through your meat grinder. Now look, the best part here is if you have a stand mixer, you can absolutely just use an attachment grinder, which I'll link the one that I use in the description. Now look at all this gorgeous ground beef. I mean, really, it is worthy of a men's fitness cover because it's so beefy and beautiful. Now we're ready to make a burger. So make sure you have thick cut, nice smoky bacon, fried until crispy or however you like it. Ew, Josh, crispy bacon is wrong. Yeah, you know what? Teach their own, all right? Whatever makes you happy and sets your soul on fire, okay? Papa says it's okay. Additionally, if you want to step up your mayo, you can make a black garlic chive mayo, like the one I have here, by simply combining half a bunch of chives that have been very, very thinly sliced, and three to four cloves of black garlic that have been crushed and pastified. You can use the flat side of your knife to do that, by the way. It should be soft enough. Then just mix it with half a cup of mayonnaise, some salt and pepper to taste, and maybe a little splash of Chinese black vinegar if you want to get a little fancy. Bing, bang, boom, fancy mayo. Now, last but not least is the famous square patty. Now look, there's a, there's a crazy secret to this, right? You're gonna take some beef and you're just going to form it into a square. That's it, okay? Make it in accordance to the dimensions of your bun. You're gonna want two quarter pound patties, totaling out at half a pound for one burger or more, you know, it's up to you. Season your patties on both sides generously with salt and any additional spices you want. Place them in a heavy bottom pan that's been preheated over medium heat until ripping hot. I want it to sizzle. I want it to pop, pop, pop. You know what I mean. Then just sear that over medium high heat for two to three minutes until you get some nice browning and crust. And I want this to be deeply browned, okay? No gray meat. Repeat on the other side and your burger is cooked to your liking. This should have a high enough fat content that a well done burger is still pretty good. Then just add the cheese of your choice. I used a mix of cheddar and smoked provolone. Now while your pan is still ripping hot, leave it on and just add a small little splash of water and immediately cover with foil and let that steam melt the cheese. Now of course you could also use a blowtorch, but you know, not everybody has to be extra like me. To assemble your burgers, make sure to first toast your buns, okay? Slice them in half, toast them in butter until beautifully toasted. I want that crunch on the inside. Add a generous spoonful of your mayo, a little squirt of tomato ketchup, followed by your burger patty, two to three slices of bacon, another burger patty, another two to three slices of bacon, your fancy boy mayo, and another little weird pattern squirt of ketchup, followed by your other bun. Now this is obviously a very American burger, but there's something so special about this combo which we're about to find out. You know, all I gotta say is this burger is so artisanal. First off, faddy, fadded, and fadder than that. The, the, the patties are square, which make absolutely no difference. Thank you very much. We won, thank you. That's the end. Bye bye. This is like the Michelin starred French laundry. And then this is kind of just like, literally trying to fly away because it's embarrassed. <laughs> the bun, Automatic win. And this only sat in the car for maybe, max, five minutes. Okay, this has been sitting for at least 10 minutes and you can see where it's soaked it up. It stops, okay? It still has that punchy charred beef flavor. You guys are always whining that I always make it decent and it's biased. So we're gonna bring somebody in. Okay, get this time to have a little bit of taste. Oh. Burger number one. You need to drink some water. Yeah, I do actually. Here you go, drink some water. You're still chewing on it. I know. Burger number two. Here's my answers. Burger number one was terrible. I actually wanted to spit it out the entire time. Burger number two is really good because I felt as though it had a lot more flavor. You can taste the bacon, the bun, Mine was the meat was one. a lot. You're kidding, are No, you I'm just joking. Like, You're not much of a burger fan, though. I hate burgers. The lesser of two evils, we won, but better. Episode 11, Wendy's. Whether you're a burger eater or not, this is quality you can taste. All right, guys, and that is it. So we made the Baconator, and I think we Don Gun terminated the Baconator. In the world of a burger, it's really not that revolutionary in flavor or texture. It's just, it's just a bacon cheeseburger with ketchup and mayonnaise. That's all it is. We just made a way better version with higher quality ingredients and yada yada, so on and so forth. Easy. So probably by now you're expecting to be in our new kitchen. I, uh, I, I swear I'm not doing this to tease you. I'm filming this way ahead of time because the move and it's busy. And so this message is from 
the past to the future. You are the future, bro. In the next video, you should see me in the new kitchen though, hopefully, I think. But anyway, with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.